Hey guys, it's me. I'm sorry I was going to make one of these a long time ago, but the two foot by two foot hole I live in was filled with lava and poo poo. When Princess Twilight smuggled the pony, I had to go and find the giant squid, but she only had the one sword and drowned. <laughs> so, long story short, I can't do that angry voice anymore uh, because it hurts my throat uh, like a, a lot, and I'll just be doing my normal voice. If you recall from my previous tutorial, we had already made two characters and a setting for them to play out my perverse fantasies in, outlined in this script. These characters were Mr. Frowny Squareface and his cousin Steve the Accountant. This animation will contain voices and more importantly lip syncing. If you recall from the script, Mr. Frownington was visiting cousin Steve's garden shed for a birthday party. For the purpose of this animation we're going to be keeping the lip syncing very simple. We'll be using the morph targets that we included in the characters in episode 1. However the first thing we'll need is some voices. Now here's a voice I recorded earlier. It's for our good friend Mr. Uh, Frownington. So we're going to um, I'm just gonna listen to this. Why hello there cousin Steve the accountant. I've brought you a lovely birthday cake. I've always imagined his voice being much deeper than that, so we're going to just pitch shift it down a bit. Why hello there, cousin Steve the Accountant. I've brought you a lovely birthday cake. Ah, it's a bit too deep actually, so we're just going to pitch shift it back up a bit, just to balance things out. Why hello there, cousin Steve the Accountant. I've brought you a lovely birthday cake. You know what guys, I think that sounds just about perfect. So now we're going to go to file and then export. Remember to save it somewhere safe so that we can then import it into the 3ds Max program for lip syncing. Now let's move on to the scene that we created. If you recall in the previous episode, we spent about 16 hours creating this complicated and elaborate garden set. <gasps> And looky here! The gang is all here already, all set up nicely in their big lovely chairs. Say hello, Frownland. Oh, he's shy. Well, I'll tell you who's not shy, though. Steve the Accountant. He loves an audience. Say hello, Steve. Hey, Steve, here's something you maybe you didn't account for. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, oh yeah, tutorial. So I was going to show you how to lip sync the audio we've created with the model that we've created. Now, I normally like to do this first. Uh, if I was 2D animating, I'd probably make all the walkie anim animations first and then, and then I'd do the lip sync. But I find it easier in, do in 3D to do the lippy movements first. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, I like to go to Graph Editor and then Track View Dope Sheet. And this will bring up this menu here. Now the Track View can be used for things like automating and looping animations and things and contains a lot of buttons I have never pressed before despite having done this for many, many years. Now in the version I'm using on the Dope Sheet, you double click on Sound and then you click Add. And then you select the file you want to add and then double click. This is why we saved it somewhere safe. Uh, sometimes the playback things don't work, so I like to click that a couple of times just to make sure it's selected. And over here you can select uh, when you want it to start. So you can start at maybe, I don't know, frame 5000 or maybe frame 6, 5 Or in this case we're just going to have it at 0. Now if you click and drag on the uh, time slider, okay, um, and move it along, you can tell what frames the audio is playing over. Now this is how we're going to do the, the lip syncing really. So select our good friend, Mr. Frowny, Frowny TV face, and uh, I'm just going to go on to Morpher, and it will do that, because for some reason it likes to do that. I was not expecting this, but whatever. Um, it does this occasionally, but you can still use the, the Morph targets there. Now this one, I've kept it very simple, they're just an open and close mouth. Now if you can tell here with the, the Morph, I've actually actually kind of goes clips into the model a bit. I did this because the smoothing kind of like messes it up a bit and makes it so that uh, it doesn't quite close all the way. So I have to like overcompensate a bit. Uh, so we're just gonna lip sync it a bit. So we're gonna start with. Now as you can tell, it starts with a closed mouth. So we'll start off here. 
Then you select Auto Key. And it wants to be about, about fully closed here on frame 3. And then at the... When he says Y, this is when it will be open the most. And then it will be closed again. So... What the fuck? I can't, I can't work under these conditions. Quite simple, really. When you have the auto key enabled and then you change basically anything in the world, it will save it at that certain frame. Hello? You can also click on a set key and that will just create a uh, basically a just set version of what it is now, which can be useful very later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat these steps um, over and over again until we have uh, completed the entire animation. So flash forward. Might as well talk over this bit as well. So what I'm doing here is I'm copying the frames that I've already placed by holding shift and then dragging it along the timeline whilst listening to the audio already in place. Uh, just to see if it syncs up properly. Next up is I click on time configuration when I uh, run out of frames because uh, originally it was only 0 to 100 uh, frames is the window I was dealing with so then I move on to the next frame I change it from 100 to 200. Uh, I like to do it in like segments of only 100 frames uh, just to, to keep it simple so I have like, a lot of precision. Uh, if you notice in just a second uh, when I unclick the model it goes back to uh, just normal like smoothed and nice so I can mess about with the bones again. Why hello there Cousin Steve the Accountant. I've brought you a lovely birthday cake. So I hope you're all enjoying my incredibly convoluted and ill thought out tutorial series. Unfortunately, Grimacing Oblong Man had to go on an emergency beach holiday to Svalbard and will not be available for the rest of this video. So, Steve the Accountant here has decided to step in and is going to show us some of the alternative ways that I do lip syncing in the past. Steve, what, what are you doing standing up? I need to build you a couch or something. Uh, just move your feet up for a second, Steve, so I can get you your nice, lovely wooden wooden footrest in place. Just just pop your feet back down, on on the wood. There we go. That's that's nice and comfy, isn't it, Steve? Now Steve's mouth moves in a very similar fashion to Mr. Frowning Squareman. It's just a little slider. You just move it up, it goes up. You move it down, it goes down. Uh, this is um exactly what I showed you in the other episode. I showed you how to make one of these. Now I'm going to um. Have a look in this little cupboard here, and we have an exact copy of Steve's head. Only it's um, got a little FDD modifier applied to it, applied to his lower jaw. Now this is mapped to the polygons, so we can take these here control points, and we can just sort of move them down, and it creates like a little open mouth shape. Now, this is how I used to do it um, years ago when I was just sort of figuring it out. Now, this is a very badly done adaption. I've realised after I've made the Steve head model that it's not actually that well constructed. There's polygons missing, so it doesn't actually form very well. Uh, but I'm, I, I'm assuming maybe you can see what I'm trying to do here. So we can just move, we can move the whole thing down if we want. Just like, you know, do that. And you can sort of sync that to the movements. Now, one of the things I quite like about doing it this way is you can have a much larger variety of movements than compared to like just a little slider because a little slider is up or down it's always the same thing but at least we can have it like you know down to the right down to the left or we could have it up and down we can have it different speeds we can have it just sort of just all the way out you know if you want to just do that just go insane and that's that's what i like to do and that's how um uh the original snos bizarre cartoons um, have that weird look about things where things just de deform and fly about and just go all just mental with the polygons. Um, but I kind of moved past that after a while. I just kind of got sick of doing that. I thought, yeah, I've done that now. Time to move on. Try, try to make, you know, kind of re rein in that madness a bit. Now, in this cupboard here, we have yet another Steve head, and as you can tell, he has little bones attached. Now, comparing it to Snossy Set again, um, this. Steve, Steve, you forget yourself. There we go. Come out of the cupboard, Steve. Now then, we have here 
I've attached little. What was I doing? Yeah, I've attached bones to the each side. Now, again, model isn't very well made. I realise this now, but as you can see, we can create little bones. And what I like about this is that it combines quite well with the skeleton. So you can move the skeleton about and move this about at the same time. With the FFD modifier, uh, you sort of struggle to do that a bit. It's a bit difficult to kind of get get together with the morph target. It works fine as well, but with this, it's um, it's, a, it's just as easy really. Uh, but again, it's just a little hinge. You can't really do the mad mouth shapes of that, and you can't really make um, uh, like different mouth. Like I'll show you in another video how to do this. You can create different mouth shapes uh, with the morph targets as well. You can create like e mouths and u mouths. I do those quite often. So in a later video, I'll show you how to do that then. But let's keep it simple. Go like this and very simple. It's clipping, but whatever. It's just for demonstration purposes. Uh, very simple. Do a little keyframe, move that down, move that up. Same again. Okay, so I'm now giving Steve complete creative control over the channel. He is now there. The, what did I do there? Oh God. Click something. I click something there. I click something there. Oh God. Maybe you found this informative. I don't know. I'm sorry. I love you. Please check out my second channel as well. It's where I post gameplay videos, uh, cooking videos, and geography learning videos. Basically, anything that doesn't take 100 hours to animate, I will post there. I love you. Bye. <laughs> this is how you animate. This is how you animate. Oh, yeah.